Yes, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, let's bow for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you again for allowing us to assemble, allowing us to be here on this, this wonderful day, oh, Father God. We thank you for allowing us to get through the, uh, last night's slumber, oh, Father God, to see a new day, a new day of the worship, Father God. We may not be in the physical church, Father God, but we're all joined together here virtually, oh, Father God. We thank you for that opportunity, Father God, right now. Lord, we ask you on this day, Father God, may your word go out, oh, Father. May it help those who need to need Receive it, O oh Father God, and that's all of us, O oh Father God. May it convict our hearts, minds, and soul, Father God, prepare better prepare us, O oh Father God, to go out this this world, Father God, and tell lost souls about our risen Savior, O oh Lord. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity on today. We continue to pray for our pastor, O oh Father God, continue to strengthen him and keep him as our prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right. So, uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity on today, Pastor. To preach on today, I think of our young people who've given up, who sang on this, this morning so far. Uh, we have a scripture come today out of the book of Second Timothy, Second um, Timothy chapter two, and we'll read verses eight through ten. That's Second Timothy chapter two, verses eight through ten. And it reads as such. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was, was raised from the dead according to the, my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as, as, an, as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Uh, I'm going to speak from the thought this morning of just remember the time, remember the time. Uh, this is a, a very interesting passage of scripture here. Um, as we look at the passage of scripture here, Paul, who is actually on his, uh, one could say his death row experience here, where he's actually um, been sentenced to death. He's in jail. He's in prison. He is there um, getting ready uh, and knows he's about to die, knows his time is up, knows that he is no longer going to be here any longer. And he's writing one of his final books here to uh, Timothy, uh, one he converted a little, a little while earlier. And so as he's writing to him, he wants to then now encourage him, pour into him, give him everything he's got left. And you can imagine the mindset of Timothy, uh, of uh, Paul here, because Paul is now Knowing he's close to uh, uh, the chopping block of Nero's chopping block, knowing he's, he's close, he's close to death and it's coming. And so, therefore, since he knows these things, he is really uh, trying to give everything he has into his servant uh, uh, Timothy. And uh, knowing Timothy is one of the uh, younger, younger, newer, younger pastors here, he is trying to give everything he has into Timothy for him to remember as things as things are going to come up. He's no longer going to be there as a person to to come to. As as Paul is, is sitting in his, his, in his prison, remember just a little while ago he was in prison, but he was in prison, he got, it was a friendly type of experience in prison where he, he was around his friends, he was around people who could see him. Uh, he, could, he was still able to witness and those, those things. He had to walk about and those type of things. But now he's, not, he's closely guarded now. Now he's in a, in a cold, dark dungeon now. Mm -hmm. no, one has, no one has access to him. And so what's happened is also is that now his friends and per persons that were close to him are now have turned their backs on him, have now not, uh, not sh just shown him the love that he needs at this point in time. But there is one by the name of Onesiphorus who is now, who, who, who braved the elements and said, and said, I'm still going to show love to you. I'm still going to come see you. I'm still going to be praying for you. And he showed love, which, which encouraged Paul to remind him that in his darkest my, his hour, God still shows love for him. But he still sent a support to him and took care of him in, in, in that fight. And so what he's trying to give to Timothy right now, he is trying to encourage him and trying to, to build him up and trying to give him, uh, give him to walk strong because he, he's going to need him to be strong in order to carry the gospel through. The one thing about this gospel is that it, it cannot sit and die with us. It has to go off. And in order for those to be saved, after, uh, after we become saved, we have to be willing to carry that gospel to those who don't know it. And Paul knew that. Paul knew that he needed Timothy to be strong because he needed him to, be, to teach other leaders. He needed to have faithful men around him that were faithful to the work and to the task that would not only learn it for themselves but go out and teach others for themselves to, to make sure that the gospel would still be able to touch those who had not heard it yet. And so Paul was very impassioned at this point here because he knew that time, his time was running up. When we think about remembering, uh, we think about sometimes we think about 
uh, I think about Facebook sometimes, where it always recalls our, our, our memories part of, this, of, of the app that tells you you can remember things from last year, that same day, this same day, last year, and years prior. As you can see what you posted, those things, it calls you to remember memories, remember times, and remember experiences, whether it be good or bad. It calls you to remember. And when you remember those things, your mind starts to reflect, and you get into, uh, to, uh, when, uh, when that took place, what was going on in that place, and what, what you experienced, how, the, how your feelings were, those type of things, because now you're remembering what it was. But the thing about what, you, what Paul is trying to put on Timothy's mind is that, is that there can't be a day, second, or hour that goes by that we don't remember what Christ has done for us. And so as we go into the scriptures today, Paul is going to try to uh, and passionately try to and plead into Paul and to Timothy to make sure that as we go as you go forth here, I'm no longer going to be here. I'm, I know my time is up. I know I'm about to die, but I need you to go forth here and remember Jesus Christ in all in all that you do. And when you remember Jesus Christ in all that you do, you better get through the things that you that you thought you couldn't get through. Why? Because you remember who Jesus was. And when you think about here, as Paul goes into scripture here a little, little bit here, he's going to, he's going to. Uh, Put some illustrations out here, as he does in chapter two. He puts illustrations out of a soldier, of an athlete, and of a farmer. And what he's trying to remind him is that the soldier could not be uh, 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 distracted by the things of the outside. Of- outside the battlefield. His job on the, on the battlefield is to take care of war. I can't be distracted by things on the battle, uh, outside the battlefield because I, tar- I won't be focused on my target. He, on the athlete, I've got to run a race. I've got to prepare myself. I've got to train and prepare myself. And I've got to run the race within the rules of the uh, confines of the race to get the trophy and try. I can't run a race that doesn't, that, uh, uh, with, with, uh, and not follow the rules and win. I'm disqualified. Myself. I need you to, to follow the course. I need you to follow the race. I need you to follow the guidelines and run the race and prepare yourself. And as a, as a farmer, he said, man, the farmers put in long, long hours and, and work hard to, 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 to work, to work the, the crop to prepare for the harvest. That doesn't happen if the farmer doesn't put in long work. What he was trying to t- come into, into Timothy was that he had to make sure he put the work in. He had to make sure that he, he, uh, that he stayed true to his calling. He had to make sure that he didn't give up no matter how tired he got how weary he got, how angry he got, frustrated he got, or how lonely he got, he still had to keep pushing through for the gospel's sake. And so he, when he's trying to pour into him on, on his, in his, in his, on, on, his on, on Paul's death row uh, uh, life right now, he's trying to pour into Timothy that I need you to carry on the work. I need you to remember what I'm, I'm telling you. I need you to remember what I've told you. But in all things, I need you to remember Christ. And so when we think about this message today, we're going to try to reflect on how we need to remember Jesus and all that we do. And by doing so, uh, it will help us to get through the one, uh, get through the th- the hardships in life. It helps us get to the things that we didn't think we could get through. It helps us get over the roadblocks in life sometimes, and it'll, it help it helps wipe away tears out of our, our eyes. It helps us pr- uh, uh, carry on through our goal, which is seeing Christ Jesus. So, uh, 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 first thing that Paul wanted us to that Paul wanted to pull into Timothy was you see the first thing it says in, in verse number eight. It says, "Remember that, Christ, remember that Christ, Jesus Christ." So we, it talks about here very quickly here as he as he as he as he uh, as he talks about the narrative here. He he's now coming from when uh, he, he had no one following him, no one around him anymore, no one is showing the love that he, they were showing him before. On on Nephiris is now showing him some love. He's he's like, "Hey, I, I got. I'm sure that no matter what's going on around you, there's people out here that's still going to uh, take support you and take care of you and work with you because I know the Lord is providing." I mean, on, on this risk, so I know he's going to take care of you. Just hold on to the hold on to the good things. And one thing about Paul, no matter how captive he was or in jail he was, his mind was not in jail. His mind was not in bondage. He was still knowing that no matter what it was going on with his physical body, his mindset was still that I still got to still uh, 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 think positive. And that's what Paul is pushing to Paul right, uh, Timothy right now. Think positive, but remember that Jesus uh, that Jesus Christ. With our first part of here. Remember that Jesus Christ, and it goes, and, and the why it's important to remember is that in the Israelites back in uh, Psalms had um, had re- for, forgotten about who Jesus was, have, have forgotten the Lord, have forgotten in, in adversity, have forgotten who, who the Lord was. And you go back to the scripture, it says uh, in uh, Psalms 106 that they made a calf of, uh, of Horeb, they, and they worshipped the molten image, and thus they changed their glory in, in the similitude uh, in the similitude of an ox they, that eaten grass. They forgot God, their Savior, which had done great things in, Israel, in Egypt. Paul is trying to pour to Timothy. Why? Because it's, it's, it's been proven that persons have forgotten. And sometimes we were, we've been guilty of it at times. That in the midst of our trials and tribulations and things don't go right, homework's not going right, life's not going uh, I can't do what I want to do, then sometimes we forget about who Christ is in that very moment. And he's trying to remember, remind, remind Timothy that in the midst of what's going on around you, I can't allow you to forget who Christ is. But, and and look, the thing about the Israelites was they have, Christ had done so much for them, and yet they still chose to, to wander away. They still chose to... Uh, to uh, to uh, 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 
to uh, worship golden images and molten images like that. They forgot. And in this passage of Scripture, Moses had to come and stand before God and plead that the wrath of God be held back, even though they, they had forgotten. So you got to remember that Paul's to try and pour to Timothy that I can't allow you that to happen because what happens if you forget is that then, then the wrath will come down. I need you to, 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 in order for the gospel to be shared, I need you to remember Christ at all times. I mean, no matter what's, who's around you, what's going on, uh, if people are supporting you, people turn their backs on you, or whatever's going on, I need you to steal to remember who Christ is. Remember who he is because without him, you're nothing. So therefore, you have to keep keep pushing on. And I know there's times that our mind strays sometimes, but I need you to pull it back in because sometimes I get, I get beside myself, and sometimes I get to, I start thinking like myself. And when I start thinking like myself, I think of what I can't do, what I can't see, and what I can't can't say those type of things, but I, I serve a, a Christ who do all things but fail. When I, when I realize I serve a Christ who do all things but fail, then what happens is then I, 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 my mind reflects on Jesus and what he's done for me. There's it, been many times in my life where we go through a situation and we just sit there and remember, oh, God, I remember when you did this for me. I know when you brought me out. I remember you provided when I didn't have anything. I remember you gave me uh, food when I didn't have any food or any money to buy any food. I remember you, you provided me a, a car when I didn't have any means. You gave me a job when I was, couldn't even find one. I remember, I remember, and, 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 and Paul is trying to pull that into me right now. In spite of all what's going on around you, what's going on in the situation right now, remember Christ Jesus right now because that's going to be the that's gonna be who this going to bring you through when you can't bring yourself out of anything. So he, not only do you try to to remember, remind him of that. He said also he's the seed of David. What he's trying to also remember here, remind him is that that he is not only uh, uh, divine, but he's also human. And he has to remember that he and that he was promised that the, that the, the, the Messiah would come from the seed of David. And when he comes out and tries to say his mama from the da seed of David, his 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 his, uh, his, his earthly father from the seed of David, he's trying to remind him that the, 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 the scripture is showing itself right here. No, uh, and don't lose any doubt. No matter what people are saying, people are out there might be trying to say a different gospel and change the narrative and try to change different words and say, man, this this, this is not this is not true. Hold on to what I've taught you. Hold on to what I've told you. Remember who he is at all times. By, by doing so, then people that don't know Christ will get to, will come to him. He, uh, he, he reminded him who the seed of David is. Back in uh, Luke, uh, Luke 1, 31, he said, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son that shall call his name Jesus. I mean, he, shall be, he shall be great, and he shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne, uh, a throne of his father David. And he and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and he and, and his kingdom shall be no end. He is trying to pour into Timothy right now more information to let him know. Just hold on to Christ. You can just you just hold on to Christ. You have the Savior. You have the you have our hero. You have our Messiah. Just hold on to what you know. Hold on and keep teaching people what you know. Because by doing that, you're going to help the gospel be able to make impact throughout the land. And the gospel is going to be able to make impact with those who have not known him yet. So we said. He pours into him now. He said, remember, remember, remember who he is. Remember he is the son, uh, 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 he, he is the seed uh, uh, of David. And he also goes a little further here. He says, he says remember now he was raised from the dead. Remember, he, he, he's pouring this into Timothy now. Remember, being from the prison, being on, uh, on, on death row, being uh, just, just getting close to dying. He said, remember these things, but also remember he was raised from the dead. Remember he is a, he, who Jesus Christ is, uh, born in the manger, as a, a, a child, no other things. But also remember he's not dead. Remember he rose up from the dead. He, uh, and, and, that's the, and the resurrection is one of the central truths of the Christian faith. So it, it, says, it, it says in 1 Corinthians 15 17, that if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, yet and yet ye we are yet in your sins. So, so without Christ resurrecting, then we have nothing. So we're trying to remind him is that preach Christ, preach Christ crucified, but preach Christ resurrected so for, the, for the witnesses to know that Christ is real. And when they know he's real, they might they believe. And you've got to keep holding on to that. And that's for us as well, that we should not, we should not forget that Christ uh, uh, died for our sins. We should not be forget the Christ died for him, but also we should not forget that Christ has raised for our sins as well. And teach that, preach that. Why? Because he's the only one that defeated death. He's the only one. They're not, not bound by death. And because of that, he is our Savior. He is our Messiah. And our hope is all in him. And that's what Paul is trying to pour into him before he, before he dies to rem for Timothy to remember there's a job he has to do. 
through and he has to cling to the faith, the faith. He has to cling to the gospel. He can't shift from it. He can't sway from it. He has to know it. He has to preach it. He has to teach it. He has to live by it because there are souls out there that need to be saved. He goes a little bit further more, he says here. He says, I suffer trouble as an evildoer. Now, remember, Paul here, this experience here, Paul was someone who, went, who, was, a, who was a person who was a persecutor, one that, took, uh, that was persecuting those that were Christians, persecuted those that, that, that believed in Christ. But it was that Damascus Road experience that, that, that Paul had that changed him, that converted him over. And because of that, uh, 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 he was now going forth now to preach, uh, preach Christ, and, uh, and the gospel came straight from the Lord himself to get to, to him, and he was going out to the world and the masses to teach Christ. In the midst of all that, he was, he was experiencing anger. He was experiencing a uh, 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 rage from people. They, they were trying to kill him, uh, put him in jail, try to silence him, all these type of things. And so he says here, I suffer trouble as an evildoer. And what he's trying to remind us is, is that since Christ suffered, we're going to suffer. He said, since Christ Stuff. We're going to go through some things that time. He said, but he tried to tell Timothy, hold on. With it. He said, you got to endure because Christ endured. You got to go through the suffering because Christ suffered. He said, uh, back in Philippians 3 and 10, that I, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the, fellow, and the fellowship of his suffering being made comfortable unto his death. We go back to, to our being baptized. We, we experience the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But also when we look at when we serve Christ, we, serve, we also go through the suffering of Jesus Christ as well. We can't feel that we're going to serve Christ and not have no problems. We can't feel that we're going to serve Christ and everything's going to be nice and easy. No, the fact of the matter is that when we serve Christ, we, we suspect things not go right sometimes. Why? Because we, we go through the, we go through the suffering that Christ, we go through the suffering as well, because Christ went through the suffering, and we go through that suffering, we know that Jesus Christ is, is on our, is at our back, is, got our, is, is taking care of us, even in the midst of our suffering. It says here in John 15, 20, remember that what, the, the word that I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you, which means that uh, young people have to remember just because we might live a, a life that we try to, we do things, we, we live, we, we do things that are right, uh, we, do, we do things, we, we follow our parents' instructions and no things like that, does not mean that there'll be some bad days coming. Does not mean some bad experiences are coming. What, what Paul's trying to remind Timothy and us right now this morning is that when they do come, remember. When they do come, when they do show up, remember Christ Jesus. When they do come around you, to remember Christ Jesus. Don't forget Christ Jesus and act like you want to act. Don't act. Don't forget Christ Jesus and act how you feel like acting uh, and, and do what you feel like doing. He said, in the midst of those trials and tribulations and persecution, just remember Jesus Christ. By remembering Jesus Christ, you have the gospel be shared because somebody's looking at you and saying, how are they going to respond? How are they going to respond to this adversity? How are they going to respond to this persecution? How are they going to respond to someone that's talking about them? Are they going to cut them out? Are they going to lie, cheat, and steal? What are they going to do? But when you come at them in a peaceful manner, when you come at them as the way Christ wants you to come at them, you take their mindset and say, man, they, they, they didn't come at, him, come at me the way I thought they were come at me. They came at me differently. How how did, I come, how did I come differently? I can't because I know Jesus. I remember him in the midst of my trials. I missed my tribulation and I missed my suffering. I remember who Jesus was, and he told me how to behave. He told me how to walk. He told me how to talk, and he told me how to live. And when he told me those things, I just can't think in my mind and not do it. I have to think and remember those things and live in those things. Why? Because there's somebody out there that doesn't know Jesus for the pardon of their sins that needs to know by my witness that he's right, that he's real. And my witness is my living. My witness is not only by my talking, but my witness is by my living in him. My, my, my example is living in him because he is my, my father. I follow him. If I follow him, I must carry out my living look like him. So that's what he's trying to remind Timothy is that you're going to go through some things out here, but all because you're following the master, following the gospel that's been sent out. And by doing so, you're going to help somebody come to Jesus. Mm -mm. Oh, man. He's got some more here. he got some more here. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, about the word, now he says, eat, now he says, now I suffer trouble as an evildoer, uh, uh, but even, un, even unto bonds, so we also try to remind him, now, he, my study, now he's talking about, now he's trying to let you know that I'm in jail now. Now, mind you, he's he not really talking about jail before, he started talking about suffering, but now he's talking about, now he says, you know what? Um, I'm suffering as an evildoer, even unto jail, even until uh, uh, locked up, even into handcuffs. I've take, I follow Christ so much that I don't care about what's going on around him. I can't, don't care less what happens to what happens, what happens to me physically. I, I follow him so much that it's led me to this jail cell where I'm getting ready to die. That's how committed I am. That's how 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 willing, how, how willing I am to follow him. That's how I know I know it's real, and that's what Paul's trying to remind you here right now. He said, "I follow him." Uh, 
I've suffered trouble because behind it. I've, I've been treated like an evil doer behind it. I've even been locked up behind it. But one thing he says right after that, he says, but the word of God is not bound. The word of God is not locked up. You may have me in this dark, dungy, cold uh, dungeon, wrapped with, with people all around me, not letting me go anywhere. I only got one person to come visit me. But in the midst of all that, the word of God is still going to go forth. And when he's try, with Timothy, what Paul is trying to put into Timothy right now is that you got to understand that you can't hold this gospel to yourself. You are my you have to understand that you got to pay, teach people about the Word of God. And by teaching people the Word of God, just like you got the Word of God from me, others will get it from you and others and, for, and so on. Think about how we got the gospel. Somebody had to tell us about the gospel, whether it be mama, daddy, or grandma, or somebody, the pastor. Somebody told us about the Word of God. We didn't hold it for ourselves. And when we learned the Word of God for ourselves, start living by it, then we didn't touch somebody else and talk about the Word of God. This is what Paul is trying to, to put in the Timothy right now, that the only way the Word of God is going to spread is we take it and we spread it. We have, but first we have to live by it. First we have to trust it. First we have to know it and then put it in our heart, mind, and soul and live by it. And then go out and tell other people about it. And those people didn't deposit, it to the, deposit that Word of God into the heart, mind, and soul. And they take that gospel out and help others that don't know Christ's part in their sins. This is what Paul's trying to remind him right now, this is what must be done. It says here in uh, Isaiah 55, 11, it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and, I shall, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. Christ is already telling you that just take my word. Take my word with you wherever you go. Take my gospel with you wherever you go. Remember that. And when you take it out there, it will not return void. There's too much in it that's gonna, that, 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 has, that has impact on lives, impact on soul. And if people just take the ears and listen to it, there's people out there waiting here. What Paul's trying to remind us here in, 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 in verse number 10, it says, therefore, I endure all things through the elect. What he's trying to say right now is that I've gone through all this I've gone through, all this suffering, all this pain, all this bondage, all this captivity I've gone through, death threats and everything I've gone through for the fact of the matter that, that the gospel be that the gospel be preached, and the gospel go out to those who need to hear. He said, I endure all these things for the elect's sake. The elect of those who have been called the, who've been called to Christ but have not accepted Christ yet. There's people out there, even today, there's people out there who have not confessed, confessed Christ yet. They are the people that God has predestined to, to receive Christ, but they have not received Christ yet because they have not been, they have that encounter yet. But what that happens is we take the gospel and take it to them. And all that's going to happen is if you take the gospel to somebody else, and somebody takes it to somebody else, and that's what we're trying to say, I've gone through all this, all this stuff I've gone through, it's for those people, those people I may not even see, those people I don't even know, but for those people, and those people including you, me, and, me and you, we were the elect saved. Paul suffered the fact that we would be saved. Paul suffered for the fact that we would know who Christ is. Paul suffered and he to death that you would understand that Jesus' gospel has to go out and it can't be bound. No matter how scared you are or how, or, 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 or how weak you might be, you still got to spread the gospel. Why? Because there's people that need to know him for the salvation to be saved by Christ. It goes a little bit further here. It says this. It says this. It says uh, the salvation which is in Jesus Christ. He's trying to remind people right now that there is no other salvation but of Jesus Christ. There's no other way. And remember, at the time of this gospel, there were, there were people that were trying to come up with other gospels and other things, and Paul was trying to tell them, don't listen to nobody else. They try, whatever they try to teach you, if you don't lie with this, it's wrong. He said, hold tight, stay strong, don't, wear, don't stray off. There's no, no, there's no other gospel where people can be saved. Hold on to this gospel. And that's what he's trying to tell right to me right now, that the, that the salvation which is in Christ Jesus. There's no, there's no other way. There's no other person. It says, we need Christ Jesus to eternal glory. What he's trying to tell us, remind us here, is that the only way we're going to be saved is, is, to, is, to accept, is to accept Christ into our life. The only way we're going to be saved is to accept Jesus into our life. There's no other way. There's no other man. There's no other power. There's no other being. It's only by Christ Jesus. And by accepting Christ Jesus into our life, they are, they say the eternal glory, which means that the fact of the matter is that once we know Christ, we'll be with, we're with him. We're partnering with him until death. And we went to death. We'll be rising to, we're in heaven with him. We'll by state, he said. He said the only way so we're not with Christ again and be with Christ is we gotta we gotta accept Christ. There's no other way around it. He said there's no other way into this. There's no other. There's no talking. There's no money. There's no being nice. You have to accept Jesus Christ. Uh, he says in Acts four and twelve. He said, neither is that salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby men 
must be saved. So there is no other choice. There is no opportunity. But they're out there. People, he's trying to remind them. There are people out there trying to take you away. Even to this day and time, there's people out there trying to sway you away. People out there trying to come up with different remedies and different ideas and different concepts. But the only way to, 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 to be saved is by acknowledging Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That's the only way. But the only way that's going to happen is if we remember who Christ is in the midst of faith. We remember who Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. We remember who all the Christ has, has, has gone through for us and by remembering those things that we're able to take that gospel which we learn uh, 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 learn and take it to the people that don't know him and those people learn it as well and take it to people that, they, that know they don't know him as well and the gospel then continue to go out to a land that needs to know him and that's what Paul is trying to say this morning that's why he went through it all for he went through it all all those things for because he remember who Christ was. He remember what he did for him. He remember how he brought him out. He remember how he took care of him. He remember how he saved his life. And even to now, he's about to die. He said, but in spite of all that, he, the, he, the gospel is real. It saved me. It changed me. It needs to do the same thing for you. But you got to accept it into your life. And I'll take it even to death because I trust him all the way to death. And that's what Paul is trying to pull on Timothy right now. you got to trust this thing. You can't, you can't waver from it. You can't get weak in it. You can't be quiet on it. Why? Because there's people out there that need to be saved. Oh, man. I'll look very close here in a second. But we think about this. How, how can we remember? How can we remember? How can we remember? What do we remember? Uh, what do we need to remember? We need to remember Jesus Christ in the midst of it all. It says in Psalm 119, 16, it says, I would light myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Uh, it goes a little further here. In Psalm 103, 135, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, who forgiveth in all thy iniquities, who healeth in all thy diseases, who redeemeth in, in thy life with, from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy mouth with good things. It goes a little further in that. It says this, uh, in, uh, uh, Isaiah uh, 4 and 3, 4, 43 and 2, it says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Uh, the, the, and through the rivers, thou shalt not over, overflow thee. When thou walkest through fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. It goes a little further. In uh, Exodus 13 and 3, Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for the strength of the hand of the Lord brought you out from this place. Remember the Lord, he's trying to say right now. He, said, he says here, he said, uh, But they shall wait upon the Lord, who shall renew their strength. They shall mount the shall mount the wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. He goes a little further and says, in, in, in John 3, 16, 17, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten, and son, that who, who, who believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his son to the world, not to condemn the world, but through the world, but through the world, but, uh, but be that through the world that him might be saved. But that wasn't it here. He said, in order to remember, gotta keep, keep remember this. Not only remember the, why he came, remember why he left. He said, he said, when, when he was, when, uh, in first period 22 and 24 and 25, with who his own self bore our sins in, in his own body on that, on that tree, that we being dead in sin should live un, unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed, by ye were for you were of a sheep gone astray, but are not, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of our souls. What he's trying to tell us this morning that, it, that he said in the midst of all that's going on, and even this today leading up to Easter, he said in the midst of all this week, he said, "Remember Jesus Christ. Remember that it's Him that walked that that, that, that that walked up Calvary's hill. It was Him that took the cross on His back. It was Him that was lied on. It was Him that people spit on. It was people that walked Him up Calvary's hill. They, they put rivers in the left hand and rivers in the right hand. It was Him that put rivers." in his feet. It was them that, that, that raised the, Jesus up for all the world to see. They said, remember when he said, lift me up and I'll, lift me up and I'll draw all men unto me. They lifted him up on the cross. Blood came streaming down. They said, remember the blood that came streaming down had, had, was covering your sins and my sins. They said, they, uh, they put him on the cross. They said, remember they put him on the cross. Uh, uh, the cross between two thieves. They left him there. Left him there. He died on the cross. Uh, they gave his life up on the cross. They started, they, they started trying to kill him. They put him in a borrowed tomb. They said, remember all those things. Remember they put him in a borrowed tomb. Remember they sat there on that tomb and hoping in uh, case somebody tried to steal him. They said, remember they sat there and they fell asleep. But early on Sunday morning, when they, put, they put him in that tomb. He rose up with all power. And said, they said, remember all of that. Remember the same Jesus they put away rose again. They said, as you walk into the Easter Sunday, remember what Jesus did. Remember he didn't fall back. Remember he kept pushing through. And if we're going to pick this gospel through the 
help this gospel and, and extend to the nation, we can't fall back. We got to know that Christ went through some things for us. Paul went through some things for us. But Jesus Christ reminded us that you, you can get through all these things. Just keep trusting in me. No matter what you're going through, just keep trusting in me. Just, you might have tears, but keep remembering why I, I wipe those tears away. You may get frustrated, but Christ remembers that, remember I hug on you and love on you. He said, Friends but turn it back at you. But Christ said, remember, I'm a friend that comes to the brother. He said, he said, hold on to me. Hold on to me. Don't forget me. No matter what's going on. Don't forget me. On Monday, remember me. On Tuesday, remember me. On Wednesday, remember me. On Thursday, remember me. On Friday, remember me. On Saturday, remember me. Oh, praise God, on Sunday, remember me. He said, remember me at 8 o'clock in the morning. He said, remember me at 10 o'clock at night. He said, remember me, remember me at noon. He said, remember me at 1 o'clock a.m. He said, remember me when, when I ain't got no money. He said, remember when you do got money. Remember, remember me you have a job. Remember you ain't got no job. Remember with me to care of you. Me a saw around you. Me a loving kindness around you. Me a what to heal you you can heal yourself. If me a love you you can love yourself. He said, but in spite of all things, remember me. It's that same Jesus who they try to put away. It's the same Jesus that said, will there be no more. It's the, it's the same Jesus that rose again. And Paul said, continue on. Because we need the world to know there's a risen Savior out there. They're fighting for you and for me. A risen Savior out there. Have not forgot about you here for me. A risen savior out there that loves you here for me because he shed his blood on Calvary. That same Jesus is a rise, a rose of a rose, and he's still there looking down and still taking care of the right hand of the Father. And he said, Just hold on. Just hold on. I know you're suffering. Just hold on. I know it's just hold on. I know you lost love ones, but just hold on. I know you're sick in the bed, but just hold on. Why? Because I, for the same Christ that delivered you before, the same Christ delivered you again. Just trust. Just trust. Just trust and never doubt. Because Jesus will be there to walk you through it all. Paul is trying to pull in Timothy right now as he gets ready to die. That we got to hold on. We got to remember Jesus now that we do. And by doing so, we will live a life that identifies Jesus Christ. We'll help those that don't know Jesus Christ. And, we'll have, and by that, the world may be changed by the experience of Jesus Christ. There might be one this morning. Mm. Mm. There might be one this morning. Mm. It doesn't know Christ for the part in this end. You have an opportunity this morning to change that. You have an opportunity this morning to change that. You may have been living a life that's been fair, that's been, you didn't think you had good behavior, and think you have a life that because, just because you're a good person, you might, God will have mercy on you. But he said the only way that you're going to experience heaven is by experiencing, is confessing me. And believe in me, Jesus Christ. And if you have not yet, if you have not yet done that, the opportunity is here today. While you're still able to breathe, while you're able to still walk and talk, he's able to confess Jesus Christ before it's everlasting too late. What is everlasting too late? That means when you when you've said your last breath, heart stops beating, you can no longer confess Christ. You can no longer acknowledge him. And so therefore, on this side of life, you have an opportunity to get it right because hell is real. Hell is real. And today you have an opportunity to get it right before it's everlasting too late. There could be one also that say, you know, I know Christ was a part of my sin. I just fell away from him. I've gone, I've backslid down. I've gone away from where I should be living for Christ. He said, but Christ is a, is a unconditional loving God that says, you know what? I've seen you sliding backwards. I see you going away. My arms are stretched wide open for you to come on back. The arms are open right now. There might be one this morning that says, I'm ready to be re, uh, rededicate myself back to Christ. There might be the opportunity this morning to get right with Christ. Coming for their laughing too late. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Lewis, for this powerful message this morning. At this time, um, as I said, we want to give Sister Aeneas King an opportunity to give her selection. And then following this, we will have the invitational selection. So, Sister King, are you on now? Are you yes. available now? Okay. Thank you for the roses to brighten up my day. Thank you for your tenderness to wipe my tears away. But when you see me drifting, Sinking and needing lifting, assure me 
into the presence of the Lord. Sleeping beauty fell asleep in her bed of sorrow. It seems like it was a she wrote the end of her tomorrow. But God never ends the story without bringing back the glory. Just usher me into the presence of the Lord. Usher me that my healing can begin. Oh, usher me that my broken heart can mend. Oh, me. I need to be restored. Oh, me into the presence of the Lord. Don't let pain discourage you. You know just what to do. When my heart gets overwhelmed, I lay my head on you. But though I still dream in thee, it's no offense to you. Oh, 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 oh. Usher me into the presence of Usher me into the present. Usher me that my healing can begin. Usher me that my broken, my broken heart can be. Usher me. I need to be restored. Usher me into the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much, Sister King. We appreciate you being able to carry on with your selection. And brothers and sisters, as you notice, as she was singing that song, there was words that she used, usher me uh, into the presence of the Lord. The message that you just heard, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel does that the Holy Spirit draws uh, to usher us into the presence uh, so that we can not only hear the gospel but believe the gospel. We have to understand that we, by human nature, feel like that we are in control or want to be in control of everything. But we also have to understand that we don't choose God first. God chose us. We would not be able to hear the gospel. We would not be able to believe the gospel. We would not be able to know that the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of us if it wasn't for the power and the action of Almighty God himself. So all of this is by him and by his grace. So when we make this appeal, as Minister Lewis has already done, make this appeal to you that if there's one here this morning that does not know Jesus and the part of their sin, we want you to understand that this is a serious matter. We realize that we do this, and many churches do what we're doing right now, each and every week, but it's a very serious matter. It's not something to be taken lightly. It's not something to just brush under the rug to say, well, I'll do it next week or I'll do it next month because the fact of the matter is not a one of us, no matter who we are, I promise to see the light of another day. We're only here by God's mercy and by God's grace. And if you know, if, if you've been listening to the message today, you know that God has convicted you. You know that there's some things that he wants to set right in your life. You know that they're not right in your life. That's the Holy Spirit knocking at the door of your heart, asking you to let, you, to let him come in, to let Jesus come in so that your life can be what it needs to be. It can be redeemed. So if you have opened your heart today, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to and not quite sure what to do, then I invite you to do this. Um, I'm going to give you my phone number. 
which is 816-509-1247. That's 816-509-1247. And give me a call and we'll share further with you with some prayers and with some scriptures so that you you don't have to have any doubt about your salvation and about your relationship with Jesus Christ. As you've heard in the message this morning, Jesus is the only way. I realize that there's some people who think, well, that's narrow-minded. Well, God is the one who's in control, and he's the one who's decided to make it narrow. Uh, So Jesus is the only way. Just going to church won't do it. Just singing won't do it. Just preaching won't do it. Just having some title in the church won't do it. Just having some programs won't do it. Just giving money won't do it. We must be born again. And the only way that can happen is we place our faith in Jesus Christ, acknowledge who he is, acknowledge what he's done for us, acknowledge that he has risen from the grave, and realize that the Bible means me when it says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That includes you. So if you're here this morning and you are prepared to do that, then I'm going to ask you that right after the benediction is given, that you'll give me a call at that number, 816 Five zero nine one two four seven. But to give you a few other, uh, just a couple of other seconds to think, uh, and don't let Satan back you up. Don't let, don't let Satan make you afraid of the people around you. This is a personal decision. This is a decision that you have to tell God to His face. Yes, Lord, I'm willing to accept Jesus, or no, Lord, I'm not. Whichever way you decide, you'll be deciding in God's face. So as this song plays, I want you to think about that. And make that decision, then give me a call if, you, if you're opening your heart so that we can share with you uh, and give you further counsel to carry on. This time we're going to have the invitational visit video. <laughs> Amen. 816-509-1247. If you're opening your heart to the Lord, certainly we would love to know about it and share with you and give you some scriptures that will strengthen you as you begin your journey and your walk with the Lord. I want to thank 
uh, Minister Lewis this morning for sharing with us uh, in such a mighty way through this message. And again, thank each of the young people this morning who have participated uh, in this time of worship. Uh, let us please prepare and set our hearts now as we get ready to move through this week uh, toward Good Friday and then toward next Sunday morning with the Easter program at 9.30 with worship at 11, uh, baptism at 9 o'clock. Um, worship at 11 and baptism at 9 o'clock will be taking place at the church for those who have signed to be there. Uh, we will still have conference or attempt to make this conference so that those who are not able to be there can still view and be a part of the worship. And so certainly we look forward to that and look forward to each and every one of you. At this time, we're going to ask Minister Lewis if he would come back now and give us a closing remarks and a benediction. Yes, Pastor, thank you for the opportunity on today. Um, we pray that the message that we said on today will help us and just be better servants for Christ. Amen. Uh, let us close with a word of prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for allowing us to assemble on this day, Lord. We just pray, O oh Lord, that your word uh, that does not go out void, O oh Father, that it will help not only us, O oh Father God, but those uh, those that need to hear the word, O oh God. May we not keep close to ourselves, Father God. May we take it out to those in our families, our communities, Father God, in our neighborhoods that need to know who Christ is, O oh God. And they may, be, may experience, Father God, what we experience in the a loving, a trusting, a, uh, a loving, loving Savior, O oh Father God. We just thank you for this opportunity on this day to allow us to be in this day, O oh Father God, to worship with you and praise with you. Lord God, we thank you for this allowing us to be this, this day that you could have took us out of here on last night, but you saw fit. For your grace and your mercy to let us have this day. We say thank you for you right now. Um, now, to, now to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, only, Unwise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. And all the saints of God did say, Amen. Amen. Amen.